It's the Riot Podcast. Good day. Welcome to the show. Today in the podcast, Isaiah, this is the last day before college football begins. The season kicks off tomorrow with Notre Dame and Navy, and there's a few other games. I think we should just do our uh, college football predictions for the season. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. You got to mark these down, hold us accountable for what we say is going to happen here in the college football season. You want to go first, your, your playoff participants, and then uh, your Heisman. I've got the Ohio State University. Of course you do. No particular order here. Okay. I also have Georgia. I have USC. Oh. And I have Florida State. My Heisman winner, which I've talked about before on the show, Marvin Harrison Jr. It's also great gambling odds. If you... He's a bit of an underdog. If you think Ohio State's going to make the playoff, Marvin Harrison Jr. makes a lot of sense because he's clearly going to be the star on the team. Um, but then again, you also have USC in the playoff, and you'd think Caleb Williams is probably going to have a pretty good season too. But they don't want to give it to somebody twice. No, they hate doing that. I'll tell you, for before we get to mine, obviously I'm not a big Ohio State fan. I think that they're going to struggle early on this season. I think their game against Notre Dame early on is going to be real tough. USC, though, is the one I had the biggest issue with because their final month of the season, what would be if they make the Pac-12 championship game, their last seven games, six of them will be real tough. And so I just don't know that they're going to be able to go through that gauntlet. And their, their defense was no good last year. There's not a lot of signs that say it's going to be any better this year. Well, the so, good thing is, in my opinion, is they might not have to. You don't think they need a good defense? No, I'm saying they could lose and still get in. They could well, lose once, but they could lose once. They're they not going like to lose six tough games. They've got they've got Notre Dame, which is a controversial tough game on the road. Controversial tough game anyway. Um, then you got Utah, actual tough game. Yeah, Utah then, always has their number. Then you got Washington and Oregon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those will be mid tier teams. They're not. It's not like you're playing. Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia to wrap up your season. You're playing solid Pac-12 schools that are always good every year, but mm-hmm. it's not like they don't play Washington, Oregon, Utah, like these teams every single year. And last year, they well, they lose one game They lost to, to Utah. Utah twice, yeah. And they so, very yeah. narrowly if escaped they, uh, Oregon State as well, if you recall that. If they lose one of these final games, go undefeated, win the Pac-12 championship game, they still get in. Yeah, if they get, if they get one loss, I think the committee would like to put them in. I also like that you have Florida State in. Georgia, what is there even to say? But I like the F Florida State in. I almost had them in for myself as well. But let me let me go ahead and give mine. And that is, I also have Georgia. I really wanted to put Georgia out. They don't have a, a solid quarterback situation, but they just don't have a tough schedule, and their defense is going to be outstanding. They've got some weapons on offense. Brock Bowers, their tight end, obviously going to be excellent as always. So I think they'll still make the playoff. I think I'm going to say they're not going to win the championship this year. Uh, I also have LSU. I put them in over Florida State because I think they're better than Florida State. They play Florida State for their first game of the year. And I think LSU, like they're going to be the best team in the SEC West. And the committee, they love the SEC, as we've been well aware. So I think LSU, they're going to be, they're probably going to be the best team in the SEC this year. I'll say it. You've got a good quarterback. Yeah, they do. Jaden Daniels. He's one of the front runners for Heisman as well. He is. I don't think he'll win the Heisman. But I don't you think if the U F L S U makes the college football playoff, you don't think he'll win the Heisman? I think he's got a obviously great odds to do that, but I have the Heisman winner coming from my next team in the playoff, which is Texas. I think Quinn Ewers. I think you put you think about him, right? Uh, obviously a big name, Texas, a big brand of a program. I think the committee would love to put them in. They play Alabama early in the season who they nearly beat last year. And Quinn Ewers had a good game until he got injured. And then they play the big 12, which is a bunch of defenses that uh, largely aren't very good. So you think about Texas going through that. Think about the numbers that Quinn Ewers could rack up uh, with another year of seasoning uh, after last year, he had some good games, but did get humbled a little bit. I think sometimes you need that when you're a, you know, somebody who's go, who's such a big name dominates in high school. You need to know that people are catching up to you so that you can push yourself to be better. I think he might do that this year. 
And I think Texas, I just think based off of their schedule, they've got a real good shot at making it. And then my last one, you're going to hate this, is Notre Dame. Yeah, I have no faith in them making it whatsoever. Obviously, I'm out on Notre Dame. I mean, I'm always out on Notre Dame. Yeah. I Going into every season, I know Notre Dame's out. I'm always out on them. Because even when they do make it, they're always terrible in the college football playoff. Uh-huh. They never win. Uh, they've never even been competitive. They've never even been close to competitive in a college football playoff game. And they play Ohio State. Double out. I think Notre Dame, they have three really tough games on their schedule. Um, two are at home, Notre Dame and USC. Uh, Ohio, no, State, Ohio State and USC. Which Ohio State and USC, I mean, that gauntlet, like you think they're going to go 2-0 there. You're going to be think, both Ohio State and USC? I think, That's crazy. They think, might as well go for, through the college football playoff. If they can win both those games, they can win the Natty title. Let me let me ask you this. You think anybody's going undefeated this year? Yes. Who, who would that be out of your list? Um, I mean, Georgia has gone undefeated like the past three yeah. seasons. And like we said, they do Ohio have a State, if they, I mean, all they have to do is be, If Ohio State beats Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan, they're going to go undefeated. USC, I think, drops a game. I think Florida State... If they beat LSU week one, I mean, all the teams have the potential to. I think one team in the college football playoff will be undefeated. Yeah. The other ones will not be. I think, especially if it plays out the way you have it, Georgia makes a lot of sense to be the undefeated team. I just think there's going to be, I just think, uh, I mean, last year we had what, one undefeated team, right? Or did Michigan go undefeated too? They yeah, went undefeated, yeah. So we had two. I think, uh, I just think the teams at the top this year are not going to be as dominant. I think they're going to be, I mean, they're going to be great teams. But I just think one a no a one loss Notre Dame makes it in, especially when they have wins. One say, loss does not make it in for Notre Dame. I think it does. They're you, not even. They don't even get to play a conference championship game. It's they, crazy. But they do play Ohio State and USC, and you have if you uh, at home, and so even if you lose one of those two, but they also play Clemson, who should be good. Like they're going to have a good resume if they go one loss. And I think last year they started off they struggled early, but. Last year, they really struggled on offense. They didn't have a good quarterback. Now they do. Sam Hartman's great. Um, and that was their first uh, Their first game was against Ohio State, which they played really well in with their coach who was coaching for the first time ever. I think they got their sea legs under them later in the season. Their defense is going to be good. They do have a lot of easier spots on their schedule. And then those tough games, I think they can win because I think uh, between the home ga- between being at home where they get Ohio State is early in the season where Ohio State's still going to be feeling things out with whatever their quarterback situation is. And I think, I just think there's a lot of potential with Notre Dame. They do always have potential. I mean, they're going to have a good record. Yeah. When you look at their schedule, they play Navy, Tennessee State, NC State, Central Michigan, Louisville, Duke, Wake Forest, they were decent last a year. Lot, a lot of winnable. I mean, those are all. I mean, cup. I mean, literally, they have they have three games this season, and they're against Clemson, USC, and Ohio State. If they win those three games and they go undefeated, then I mean, they're going to be the number one team in the country. Yeah. If then, they go undefeated, they will be the number one team in the country by far. Oh yeah. Um, Do I think then, Notre Dame finishes this year number one? No. So I think they lose one game. I think they don't get them. I think, uh, and then you may notice I have no. Big Ten teams in at all, which is why do you think you think they're going to put in no Big Ten teams and they're going to put in Notre Dame? Notre Dame gets in over Ohio State, but if they beat Ohio State, that's fair. Yeah, but they're going to get in over Ohio State, and then you're assuming Ohio State beats Michigan. Then obviously, because uh, if Michigan goes undefeated, I think there's a shot. I just think Michigan. If they go undefeated, Michigan they're going to get in. I th- yeah, but I. But that I mean, you could say that about literally any Power Five team. But if Notre but Dame I just goes don't... undefeated and Michigan goes undefeated, Michigan's still going to get in. Because they're the Big Ten champion. I'm, if they both go undefeated, they probably both go get in. I don't think. I think maybe one team, maybe Georgia, maybe LSU. I think one team goes undefeated. Maybe I just don't. I don't. I think everybody's gonna have a loss. And I think in the Big Ten, I'm thinking Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State. I think the gap. I think Penn State's pretty good. I think the gap between Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State, they're all pretty close. And then also Wisconsin too. I think somebody could get nipped by Wisconsin in the conference championship game, which I wouldn't say in previous years. I just think there's uh, there's a lot of trouble there. And I, just I think can't Notre there's Dame never with been one loss, I think people would really, the committee would love to put them in. There's never been a time a Big Ten team hasn't gotten in, though. They're the first time for everything. So you're saying this is history. You're calling for history. Yeah. <laughs> I like I it. I also have only two conferences making it. I think it could yeah. de- I think it could definitely happen. I just think the Big Ten champion is, is, is a pretty shoe in to get in there. 
But we'll see. I mean, if Ohio State and Michigan both miss, that means that they both slipped up pretty big. But yeah. I, I can see, yet again, I'm an Ohio State homer. If we lost three games this year, I would be surprised but not shocked. Yeah. Because they also, I mean, it's they have a brand the, new quarterback. Brand new quarterback. But then again, it's almost, it would almost be shocking just because the bottom of the Big Ten. Like, there's just a lot of gimme games in the Big Ten, too. Yeah, we'd so. have to lose to Penn State and Michigan, and then maybe one crappy team could beat us. I can't wait. College football, it starts uh, as far as our, we're talking, it starts tomorrow. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a grand old time. It's going to be epic. I cannot wait. <laughs> all right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast where there's no football talk at all. It is the riot. Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is the riot on radio. U. but it sounds, it sounds to me, if this is, if this is accurate, the weekend started for a lot of people yesterday. A lot of my friends aren't working today. They're not working today either. They're all golfing right now. Oh, without me, those fiends. Uh, it, they uh, they they're not alone. There's a lot of people evidently taking off today and yesterday. This is according to a new survey that analyzed sick leave taken across the United States. It says that over the past five years, more sick leave is taken on August 24th than any other day of the year. What an interesting time for people to be sick. I don't feel like a lot of people are sick right now. It doesn't seem that way, does it? And this is, I mean, this is the last five years. So that includes COVID time, not COVID time. It could like, it's not like it could just be, oh, this is when COVID spiked or something like that. This is the last five years, all kinds of data. August 24th, the most popular day to be sick. Do you think that that has to be because people aren't actually sick and they just want a day off around this time? It could be that. It could be the, maybe, some, I guess it's hot everywhere right now, though. Yeah. Because I was going to say the changing of the seasons. Yeah, it's still. Because we keep on talking about fall, but it's just not fall. It's not fall anywhere. Not anywhere. It's hot out everywhere. Yeah. Still. So I don't know why anybody would be sick right now. Uh, yeah. I, I think mean, they're faking. You know what I think they're doing? What's that? I think they're actors. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's, nobody's actually sick. That sounds... That's completely right. I don't believe that that you're sick right now. I be, oh, actually, you know what? I've got one hypothesis. But I mean, my main hypothesis is everybody is a little impatient. Labor Day's coming up, but outside of that, you've had the entire month of July after July Fourth. You had the entire month of July, and then all through August. And there's probably a lot of people that didn't schedule their vacation, or they had a vacation earlier on in the summer. And they're just like, it's been so long since I had a day off. So that's one hypothesis, that they just get antsy. And they're like, nothing hap- important's happening now anyways, which is true. But here's another one, too. Think about this. All the back-to-school stuff going on right now. Mm. So all the kids that haven't been together all summer long, now they're all together again. And what are kids? Sick. Nasty, little Disgusting. sick, little, yeah, disease-spreading mongrels. And so then they take that home to their parents, probably. True. Like that could first, be it as the well. The first three days of school, Johnny picks his nose and gives uh, and boogers Leslie to everybody in class. Yep, yep. 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 And then, uh, I and know then how it goes. next thing you know, all of a sudden, all the parents are sick and calling off. So whatever it was, today, uh, yesterday was the sickest day of the year, but we made it through. I was going to say, if, you, if you're not off yesterday or today, that uh-huh. means you're good. Or it means you missed out. You, we definitely missed out. Yeah, we did. Yeah. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. A new viral video going around that, that is just catching the UFO world by storm. Have you seen this? You taking a look at this? I've taken a look at it. You believe I've this? I've analyzed it. You believe this thing? It's a video that uh, captures from two different angles, or there's two different perspectives taken of a UFO whizzing by with a an airliner, a jet nearby, and then you actually can see... One perspective is taken from a plane that seems to show the UFO and seems to show it saying it has words on it, uh, letters, 
the that spell out truff, like the sauce. What do you make of all this? I'm starting to wonder how stupid they think we are to believe something so ridiculous. What do you mean they? Whoever made this little thing. Uh-huh. My thoughts on it are, if you've seen the video, yeah. Hudson, have you ever seen a UFO video uh-huh. where the UFO looks more like a UFO you would see in a movie? I mean, this is a literal... Yeah. Anything that you would imagine a normal person that lives on Earth would imagine a UFO looking like yep. would look exactly like that. Uh-huh. I think that's why because it's that's garnered what they, so much attention. But in real life, if there were actually aliens, you really think that in every <laughs> space movie, we yeah. just gotten it right. Somehow we just we know exactly it. what their spacecraft looks like. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Like, it's a flying saucer. Like, we were right yeah. in every single alien movie. Since, like, the 1950s. We've gotten it right every time. They had no evidence, and somehow they were able to accurately predict what a UFO would be, what an alien spacecraft would be. That's a fair point. I mean, come on. We got to start thinking a little more, people. You really think that's what an alien spacecraft would look like? No chance. And the aliens would use our very same letters, too. Mm -hmm. They would use the English language and spell out truff on their their spacecraft. Some are saying that this is very clever marketing for truff, the sauce. Feels like the most reasonable explanation, doesn't it? Occam's razor, you know? The simplest explanation is usually the the right one. I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's entertaining. It is. I've never had truff sauce. No, neither have I. Is this video gonna gonna make you uh, wanna wanna get it? I don't think so. And if you look at the truff hot sauce, and the truff on the uh, the flying saucer, yeah, it's like, the, it's like the same lettering too. Yeah. So I'm starting to think it's more and more marketing. I think you're right. Yeah, we just, I mean, we kind of just advertise for truff right here. So basically. now, whenever I see an alien or UFO video, mm. if it looks like a flying saucer, I'm out. You can't convince me that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's got to be oddly shaped. It needs to be something weird. Uh huh. I'm over this whole flying saucer thing. I know it's not real. It needs to be something odd. We need to think outside the box. Yeah, we we see right through this ruse. (laughs) Yeah. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Pop quiz for you. You're at a 7-Eleven. A guy rolls up to you. Pulls a knife on you. And oh yeah. He's got three birds on his shoulders. What do you do? (laughs) I'm in danger. I think, uh, what kind of birds are they? Big birds, little birds? Uh, exotic birds. Then you're in danger. You're in danger? You're in serious, serious danger. He has three birds, not Uh just one, three? He's got three. Yeah, one would be strange enough. Three, that's more birds than shoulders. It's like a little army. Yeah. It's like his backup. That's his gang. I don't even know what he needs the knife for when he could just sick the birds on you. Right? That's what I'm thinking. Like, if you had the birds attacking me, mm-hmm. I mean, you're robbing whatever you want. Yeah. They've got, they've got those claws. Birds talons. are scary, dude. When they want to attack, birds are yeah. scary. They fly. I went, I went to one of the pet stores not too long ago that have the birds where you can just, like, stick your finger in them, whatever. And, you do uh, what now? What? The where the birds are like in the cages, but they like the top of the cage is open, so you can put your you can like have the bird stand on your arm. Got you it, want, got it, got or it. Or pet them if you would so choose. Do you pet pet birds also? Pet them? Do you pet you a bird? Stroke. You lightly stroke its back what if it trusts pet. you. If it trusts you. I I don't like birds either because if you wanna either you have to keep a bird in a cage and it's like what's the point? This They're is an loud. animal that wants to fly around and be free, and you're caging it up. Smell bad. Or or you can let it fly around your house and be free, but you have to pe- put a diaper on it. And any pet that needs a diaper as a pet, I don't want. So, I, therefore, not a bird fan. Anyways, this is all something, this is, to be clear, I'm not just bringing this up out of the blue. This is something that happened. Fairfax County, Virginia, a man with three birds in tow 
uh, robbed a 7-Eleven at knife point, and now the police are trying to identify this man and catch him and bring him to justice because you can't just go robbing 7-Elevens no matter how many birds you have. They're parrots, too. Yeah, big ones. Big and colorful. And I, I keep thinking to myself, how difficult can it be to identify? How many people could there be in Fairfax County, Virginia, that have three birds? A three, I mean, he has to be known as the parrot guy. Yeah. He has three freaking parrots. Like, how do you not figure that out? He's dressed pretty colorfully, too. Like, if your neighbor hard. has a parrot, and he's kind of weird. Uh-huh. If he has three parrots, and maybe he's a little bit suspicious. Yeah. He probably just robbed the, the nearby 7-Eleven. And what's, what's unique about this, too, uh, well, uh, obviously, there's lots of unique about it. To add even another layer yes. is this guy had just recently swung through the drive through at McDonald's, and the employees at McDonald's, he, he just had, like, the birds sitting out, like, on the edge of his car and stuff. And so the McDonald's employees were filming him because that's, like, a funny thing. And then moments later, who knew that this guy would be over at 7-Eleven pulling a knife on people? How about the top hat? He's also wearing a top hat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Layer. I told you he was dressed uniquely. He's wearing a darn top hat. And like, is that a Hawaiian shirt kind I, that, of thing? That, it has like roses on it. It yeah. looks like he's dressed wildly. He's dressed real exotic. Yep. The kind of way you would expect somebody who owns three birds and brings them with him everywhere to dress. I mean, the hat's so big that two of his parrots are sitting on it. I think maybe that's the reasoning for that for having the hat. <laughs> that could be. Is so his parrots can sit on the hat. And he has one on his shoulder, two on the hat. It's it's wild that he apparently has tattoos too. I can't make those out from the videos and pictures, but this guy has done like everything they would tell you not to do if you went to criminal school. You know, be nondescript. Don't cause a scene type stuff. This guy couldn't have called more attention to himself and somehow he's still evading justice. I'm not even mad. I'm just impressed and a little scared. Yeah. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. You know what's coming up on uh, on this weekend, Isaiah? is National Dog Day. Really? Yeah, it is. What are we supposed to do for that? Um, Do something nice for your dog, right? I would say so. Take Jim to the, take Jim to the dog park. I've got That's a busy a, weekend. So you're not going to. This isn't really a weekend about Jim. You're not going to celebrate with Jim tomorrow on this National Dog Day. This weekend's about me. That's, uh, I don't like that attitude. I'll, I'll celebrate with him this weekend, but I know that this won't be his best weekend yet just because we're busy. You, you, but we'll make it back. He's more of a weekday dog. Oh, Okay. We spend a lot of time together during the weekdays. I think, uh, you know, it's funny, and obviously you can get away with it, but if you, like, said the same things you would say about Jim, but about a child, if you were like, he, yeah. He's more of a weekday kid. Yeah, if Jim wasn't a dog, if, it was, if nobody knew, it's a human name. If people thought you were talking about your child. On the weekends, we don't really hang out yeah, as much, but right. on week, he's a big weekday guy. I'm a little too busy for Jim on the weekends. But during the week, yeah, I'll see him for a few minutes. Do something <laughs> nice for him. Uh, tomorrow is Interna- uh, National Dog Day. And so in honor of the occasion, I have a list here of the best and worst cities for dogs. Was this list made by dogs? No, it was made by LawnStarter.com. They make these lists all the time, but they use metrics like how many dog-friendly rental properties there are in the city. Uh, how many dog parks per resident are there? How many pet groomers per residence? Um, dog, uh, this is big. Best places to board your dog You need if you need to go on vacation. And uh, dog-friendly restaurants as well. So all that criteria, they, they took into some more things into account. You know what the top city in this nation for dogs is? What is it? Orlando, Florida. Congratulations, Orlando. Yeah, they, they ranked... What re- makes it so great? Uh, it has the most pet groomers per 100,000 residents. Is one of the top things in its favor. Also, more dog boarding options per 100,000 residents as well. That's interesting. You think that's because maybe the idea is it's very touristy, and so people, it's like, bring your dog on the flight and then board it here, 
mm. instead of leaving it home. Could be. That could be, right? That's not a bad idea. I wonder if people do that on vacation. I mean, they must if Orlando has more dog boarding options than any other city per capita. Uh, number two on the list. It's, it, that's true because if you look at who's number, guess who's number two? Las Vegas. Guess who's number three? Miami. Yeah. Boom. You figured it didn't out. Didn't realize that. You're smart little never dog. Never thought about that. I never thought if if Zafira the dog, I would leave her behind here and board her with some somewhere. I wouldn't take her along and then board her when I get there. But I don't see why that's a problem. I I can see why a lot of people would want to do that. Uh, number two on the list was Tampa, Florida. Three. Alexandria, Virginia, right near D.C. Four is Austin, Texas, and five, Richmond, Virginia, the best cities for dog lovers. And now, let's call a couple cities out. The worst cities for dog lovers? Patterson, New Jersey. Also, Detroit, Michigan. That just seems... Detroit, Michigan, and then Newark, New Jersey. Those cities are just the worst city for anybody. Are we going to have a list where Detroit isn't a... I mean, I'm sorry if you live there. Yeah. But every list that we have, Detroit is just a bottom three city in all categories. And I'm yet yet again, my Cleveland, one of my favorite cities of all time, is Uh, always at the bottom of lists. But it's not the bottom of the list for this one. No, it pales pales in comparison to Detroit. It's like 30. (laughs) From the bottom. Well, there you have it. Happy National Dog Day tomorrow. Do something nice for your dog. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. Do you think this is possible, Isaiah? For somebody's job to give you the ick? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. If you're scrolling through, not Tinder because you're banned, but Hinge or Bumble or whatever apps you use, you see, you see their occupation, you go, that's a note from me. Yes, I think it can be a Nick. All right. Depending on what it is, but there's many a jobs where you look at, and my friends have talked about this before too, for their jobs. They're like, I don't like telling girls my job. Because they're afraid it's a Nick? Because they don't like it. Yeah, they say girls don't like it. Well, do you think, first of all, if you are aware that you have a job like that, can't you just kind of like cook the books, wordsmith it a little bit to come up with a way of introducing what you do with, being honest, but not necessarily clearly explaining it. <laughs> Usually I say that I'm a professional minor league baseball player. Uh, you do. Because nobody that, knows any of them. That, that's true. But wouldn't she catch on when you don't ever have to play a game? I'm out, I'm out of season. I'm, I'm on the IR right now. <laughs> I'm banged oh, okay. up. Yeah. Uh, I'm recovering. So what, what jobs would you say... Let's call some people out. What are some jobs that would give you the ick? Mm, me personally, I don't know if I have any that I'm like heavily against. Uh-huh. That I see the, and right off the rip. Because there's positives and negatives. Like nurses, they've, yeah. got, a, they have, they've got a great schedule. Three days a week, they like work. Yeah. They work like three twelves. But they could also work overnight and stuff like that. Yeah, which obviously they sleep isn't, all day. isn't ideal for me because yeah. I, I go to bed early. Uh-huh. And I get off early, so if you're, it just doesn't work as well. Mm-hmm. But that's not an ick, though. Not an ick, but you know what the ick is? What's that? Is I've never been a nurse that hasn't told you. She's a nurse <laughs> within the first three seconds of the conversation. <laughs> Unfortunately. I'm not sure. calling you out. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. Is that, that's, that's the first one that comes to mind? Anything that is else? the first one that comes to mind every time. Because I saw, I've got a, I've, I've started looking up here of like what other people might think are, um, Employment X. And you know what another one is? What's that? People would say DJ. Would they say that? Go that- DJ. Yeah. <laughs> they would. I mean, 100%. If I met a girl, uh-huh. that's why I don't say this. If I met a girl and I was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a DJ. How you like me now? <laughs> they would say, walk away, sir. Well, first of all, good thing I'm not a DJ. They're going to, yeah, no, because they're going to think if you say DJ, because I've experienced this so many times in life, they think you. Oh, what do you do? The turntables? You Are do you party? disc jockey? Yeah, that? you do a party every Saturday night. You do weddings or no? Yeah, right. I, we do, actually, but uh, that's not really what we're... That's not exactly what we are. So, yeah, DJs ago. go. Uh, how about... This is tough. Somebody said influencer. Yeah, that's tough. It is tough. They say... Uh, 
They influence nothing and are sheep following the crowds. Yeah, that's all true, but the problem is you don't get to be an influencer without being pretty cute, though. So it's a, it's a give and take kind of situation. True. Anything, any other ideas come to mind? One of my friends always complained because he works in a factory. And he never brings that up. There's nothing wrong with working in a factory. No. That's but pretty he good says, work. He just says it's not really like a sexy job. No. Not. And then they ask, like, what kind of factory? And he has to say, I make soup cans. Yeah, I think it's more And then that. Right I don't think that's, that's winning over many hearts. It's not a good transition. No, even though he probably makes good money doing that. Yeah, solid, yeah. Uh, what about this? This is another good one. This is great. Politicians. Not that I was ever in the market to be dating a politician, but they like their your personal life and your professional life is just going to cross over in ways that I wouldn't be comfortable with. That's an ick. It doesn't matter. I, we could have one hundred percent the same actual beliefs, but having to like do political events and you know like but Hudson do all the meetings. You're not thinking about this right. Why the fame? <laughs> this would be great for your career. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I don't have to worry about this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. And we know this. Inflation is running rampant. Uh, things are just keep getting more expensive. The price of everything pretty much just keeps going up, up, up. But that doesn't mean the quality of everything in this world is going up, up, up. What are some things... Where the price keeps going up, but the product is actually getting worse. I've got some good answers. Yeah. There, I mean, there, there's actually, we could do this all day probably. Yeah. Because, I mean, the price of it, everything is going up. So what things are actually getting worse as time goes on is the question. 8772-RADIO-U. Something where the price is going up, but the quality keeps getting worse. Text some in. Talk to us in the free radio you app with the talk to us button. Let us know things where the price is going up, but the quality is going the wrong direction. You want to you want to reveal one real quick? I think a uh, big one people will say is streaming services. Really? How you like me now? Oh, well, that's tough to say. How so? I know the price keeps going up, and that's true, but you're not running out of stuff to watch. Yeah, but I feel like the quality isn't as good. I'll be the one to say it. I think I think there's always something good to watch. So I don't think I don't know that that's fair to say. I mean, you think about this too. We've got strikes going on. There's no new stuff being oh, made right now. Boo-hoo. There was COVID. Oh. We went through all of that where they weren't able well, to so make things. So the quality worse or what? No. We went through COVID. There's no new movies coming out right well, now. Yeah, but when was the last so time you like, like, how was it better? How was it better? When was the last time you logged into Netflix and you're like, man, there's just nothing here? Every time I get on there, every time I watch a Netflix original or an Amazon Prime original, when was the last time you saw one of those that was good? I still think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. I feel like back in back in 2017, 2018, 2019, it was a little bit, a little bit better. That's I mean, all I'm was, saying. It was way cheaper. I just don't think it's... The quality's gone down. I feel like it has, considering there's no actors making movies. Well, that for the moment, anyways. <laughs> it's, what, how is it worth the money? <laughs> Eight seven seven two radio U. Things that uh, the price is going up, the quality's getting worse. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at radio U official. The riot radio U. The question right now is, what's something that's gotten more expensive? As of late, but the quality is actually going down. Isaiah said streaming services. I disagree. I think some shows suck, but I think, and obviously the price is going up, but I still think there's always something to watch. We also have a lot of people texting in talking about fast food. I see Megan calling out fast food. It just keeps going up. The the quality isn't going there. Sheena says eating at restaurants. Lydia specifically, she's not just saying fast food in general. She's calling out Raising Cane's specifically because the, the, not only is the price going up, but the, the tenders are getting smaller. And Robert said, Robert said McDonald's. I think that is true. I think ever since, uh, I mean, it goes back to COVID, right? That the price has obviously gone up, but also importantly, it's not that the food tastes worse necessarily, but just the quality of, of service. You're just, you're waiting longer. Your order's getting messed up. That kind of stuff. 
What about, uh, what about Brittany who says the internet? She says for her, the price just keeps going up and yet it still goes out at least once a week at her place. Facts. I, I'll tell you what, the, the quality of internet sure isn't improving. No, it's not. <laughs> and the price definitely is a, uh, a key, continually going up. Dirk saying cars, this automobiles. Is this is mine. That was I yours, I was going to huh? say this one. All cars are made of literal plastic now. Like my exact car uh -huh. that I had in like 2008, I could have crashed that thing into a tree Yeah. at 30 miles per hour, and it would have been like a dent. If I crash my car right now at 30 miles per hour, my uh -huh. new truck, into a tree, it would legitimately be destroyed. Like, everything is just plastic. The whole front is plastic. Where my old truck, yeah. I could have literally hit so many things uh -huh. before you even knew that I had gotten into an accident with my new truck. If I touch anything, if I hit styrofoam, yeah. it will break. It's, it's true. it's way more expensive now. It's true. I feel like the, the, like the minivans my parents were driving when I was growing up, they could have... They could have driven into a canyon, and it would have still survived somehow. It wouldn't have mattered, like, because yeah. it was literally made of metal. Like, my old truck, the bumper was metal, and now it's actually plastic. Like, it's plastic. I could punch through it with yeah. my hand. It's so, it's so flimsy. Yeah, that's a good one from, uh, from Dirk. What about, um, I'm trying to see what else we have here. Philip says Girl Scout cookies. I mean, they're definitely getting more expensive. Yeah, they are. I don't know the quality. I still like them, though. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I haven't had them in a while. Uh -oh. So Now, I'm with this one. Chuck, video games. The price keeps going up, but they're giving you an unfinished product and then, you know, trying to fix it with updates in as you go along. That is true. I mean, the price of video games, it just keeps going up. But you think about it, it's right. They're, they're trying to fix stuff with updates later on in the game. And forget about how they're asking you to buy additional things in the game. Like when you pay to have a game, you don't actually get the whole game. Everything isn't available to be unlocked in the game. You have to pay to get certain things. That to me is quality going down. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. You got anything else? Um, the only other ones I had, Subway. To call them out. It used to be the $5 foot long. Subway, yeah. And now it's like a $10 foot long. Just keeps on getting more expensive. How about housing? You mm. can't tell me the house that's like, that used to be 200 k that's now 600 k You're right. That 600 k house is not 400 k better. And think about no renting shot. too. Rent, I don't care like rent, about inflation. It's rent, just not. Renting keeps going up and you're getting less and less, you know, I mean, we've all seen the, the, the landlord horror stories of, the maintenance that needs to be done that just never gets done kind of stuff. That's, that's a good call. You want to talk about things that have changed? Everything just used to be built better. Now it's built just like to last a shorter period of time. Yeah. That's just how it goes. iPhones keep on getting more expensive, uh -huh. but they keep on lasting shorter. Oddly enough, every time there's a new update, yours just starts getting a little bit slower. Every time you get a new iPhone, it gets it goes out of, out of fashion a little bit faster. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is right. It actually, this is, why do we talk about this? This is depressing. You like that? <laughs> Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com It is the Riots on Radio U. And today on the show, we are joined by not one, but two members of a Radio U throwback band making a comeback. We got double trouble today. We've got Jeremy and Scott from the Myriad on the show. Good morning, guys. Hey, good morning. Good morning. The first question for you guys is, you're both, uh, you're video chatting in with us. Where are you guys actually talking to us from? I'm in Redding, California right now. Yeah, and I'm in uh, Billings, Montana. So right. not close to each other whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope, nope. <laughs> well, that, I guess that brings me to my first question then. Yeah, it does. Uh, if you guys are not close to each other now, when you were working on your new music, did you do a lot of that remotely or were you actually, did you happen to be in the same area? Did you all get together? How did that work out? Scott's actually my neighbor. So he's, he's on a trip to Montana right now, but he lives literally down the street from me. So we, we did work together on the song in my studio. Um, yeah. Nice. So that's in California. You guys are in Redding, California then? Yep. Northern okay. California. Gotcha. And then when you guys were recording back in the day, 
Is that how you guys all met because you live next to each other? Or how did like the band really come together? You know, we, so the band formed in sort of in Redding, California, and then we moved to Seattle together. So Scott and I and a couple of the other members moved up to Seattle back in, I want to say it was in 2000, 2001. And um, yeah, so we, we were all pretty close to each other uh, when the band formed. Nice. Nice. So I want to hear more about signs. I also just want to know more about um, why was now the time that you guys, after so many years, were able to get back together? You know, it, it's, uh, I guess the, the long and the short of it is um, after we released With Arrows With Poise, um, we were touring. It was kind of a big year for us, 2008, 2009. And then our drummer, while we were on tour, we, we realized that he had bone cancer. And um, so we took a long break um, for him to get treatment. He fought really hard. And unfortunately, uh, Randy, our drummer, passed away in 2010. Mm -hmm. At that point, Scott had left the band and Randy had taken over for Scott in, I want to say maybe 2006 or seven. Um, and so when Randy died, it kind of took the wind out of my sails. I kind of went into a, a, like a dark cave for a while. <laughs> and, um, and then Scott and I, uh, have been hanging out recently. We actually went and saw a concert together and at, on the drive home, Scott said, man, we should release something. And I said, well, I do have a song I wrote um, that would be fun to do. And Scott's like, let's do it. So we, we just got to work, um, the next day. Yeah, that's, nice. a, that's an amazing story. Yeah. So now that you guys have obviously released signs, what is, what is to come for you? Are is there, is there more music on the way? Do you guys have plans or is, or is it kind of just in the moment of, of what's going on right now? You know, when we release signs, like I, I think for me, I just, uh, you know, Scott, he's been a big encouragement for me, um, with this song and, and possibly more to come. I, I keep telling Scott, slow down, buddy. And, uh, but you know, <laughs> we, we had Scott's like, let's, let's release an album. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's do this song first. Let's see how it goes. But you know, I had so much fun doing this song and, you know, even last night I was at the studio writing, and so I think there could be some more to come. Yes, that's what we like to hear, especially after hearing Signs. Now, you mentioned that Signs, uh, it's its the new song that's out now. We're going to play it here in just a moment. And the story of Signs ties into Randy, your drummer, passing away. Is that right? Yeah, so when, when Randy was in um, hospice, um, after fighting really hard for a couple of years, uh, I had some conversations with him that, you know, I never thought I would have with uh, a best friend. Um, he was ready and, and um, he was ready to go. And, and, you know, he, in, in, in the most healthy way, I, I think you could possibly be. Um, he of course didn't want to go, but he was, we had conversations about heaven and, and God and the mystery and, and what that's going to look like. And Randy told me, he said, Hey man, if there's a way that I can communicate with you from the other side, I will. And, um, it's kind of a weird conversation to have with somebody, but he knows that I'm a, a dreamer and, um, I, I like to, uh, write songs about these kind of things. Um, just the, the, the mystery of God, the things that we don't know, the things that are going to blow our mind. And, and so he told me that. And then he also said, you know, keep writing. He asked why I hadn't written for a while. And I said, man, it just took the wind out of my sails when, when I found out you got cancer and he's like, well, you know, maybe someday you'll, you'll write a song about this. And so, Years later, I told my assistant, Andrew Jackson, hey, I think I'm ready to write again. And Andrew knew Randy. Andrew knew what that meant for me. Um, he knew about those conversations with Randy. So we ended up writing this song together. And at the last minute, a doctor friend of mine 
I showed him the song. I hadn't written the bridge yet. And then the next day he called and said, Hey, that song you showed me, um, I know you haven't written the bridge yet. I wrote the bridge last night. Is that weird? And I was like, <laughs> it's only weird. And it's only weird if it sucks. <laughs> let's, uh, let's check it out. So we got together at my studio and um, he, he showed it to me and the lyrics were beautiful. And I wrote a melody to it. And, um, and then a month after that, the three of us, well, it was Andrew and I were going to produce a record in London and the, and the, strangely, this doctor friend that joined in on the song, he said, uh, he called me the night before and he said, I'm coming with you and Andrew to London. And so when I picked up Dr. John and then I picked up Andrew and we're driving to Sacramento for a couple hours and he's telling us that he just, um, la the night before, he just felt like he's supposed to get online and book a ticket and come with us. And that something would happen that would change our lives forever. And, and you know, again, like, you know, the, I, I love the mystery. And, and for me, I didn't brush it off. I was like, w what's it going to be and when? And, and Andrew was right there with us engaged in what is this holy, you know? And, and so, um, that day was very strange. I mean, I, um, we, we had these lots of conversations about God and, and, um, even, Andrew at some point said, Hey, um, he, he had been my assistant in the, in recording in my studio for about 10 years. I, I, um, brought him on the team when he was 19. And, and at this point he was 29. And at some point on the trip, he said, Hey, um, when I'm gone, I've been praying for the last couple of weeks that God would bring you somebody that, you know, serves you the way I have. And I'm like, are you quitting? And he's like, no, I'm not quitting. And I was like, well, why would you say that? And he's like, I don't know. It's just been something on my heart. You know, nothing lasts forever. And certainly he wasn't referring to, to dying or anything like that, but it was, it was a strange day with conversations like that. And then while we were in flight to uh, London, Andrew began having some chest pains and the doctor that came with us on the flight happened to be the only doctor on the plane. And right away he informed the pilot that Andrew was having a heart attack and Andrew didn't know, you know, we, he, he kept that from Andrew and just said privately, you know, if you can land very quickly. So the pilot landed, he threw an hour early. Um, when the plane landed, there was a, a a whole bunch of EMTs waiting and um, John got Andrew into a wheelchair and uh, they wouldn't let me get out of my seat until Andrew, um, I wanted to follow them. And, and after they passed me, the, f the flight attendant said, you can go with them. So I stood up and followed John and Andrew down the aisle. And right when they got to the door, um, Andrew looked at me and he, he gave me a peace sign. Um, and, uh, the last thing Randy told me was, you know, if there's a way I can communicate with you, I will um, look for a sign. And I said, what kind of a sign? He said, just keep your eyes open. And Andrew looked at me and he gave me a peace sign. And then right after that, he um, went into cardiac arrest and um, he didn't make it, you know, and it, it was this, it was the strangest thing because it, it you know, it was a heart, crushing and heart wrenching and and the morning for me continued for years and still goes to this day mm -hmm. but it was uh it was interesting you know andrew's mom flew in and, and the first thing she said to me after we hugged and cried together she said i want to be mad at somebody i want to say why wasn't there a doctor on the plane um why why wasn't why didn't they have equipment to 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 tell he was having a heart attack. Why wasn't there a uh, medical staff that had the tools they needed? And she said, but I, I can't be mad at anybody because everything was right for Andrew to be saved, but it was his time. And, you know, some of those things that I talked with Andrew about, uh, or with, with Randy, um, those things about being ready and, and him experiencing God, um, and the mystery and all those things like, when Randy died, I didn't feel that. I just felt angry. I was really pissed. He had two young kids and it took me a long time to, to get over that. But when, when Andrew went, 
it didn't take away the sting. It didn't take away the mourning, but there was something I could recognize as, as holy, the, the, the holiness of being with a friend as he sees Jesus for the first time, as he crosses over into that mystery that awaits us, you know, and as I, you know, and again, it, it can never take away the hurt or the sting, but I, I experienced it differently. Um, having been there with Andrew on that flight. Wow. That's, uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, we appreciate you, I guess, pouring all of that out into the new music because uh, we're really loving Signs. So now having that story in mind makes you listen to Signs a little differently. We'll play that here next. Uh, check out The Myriad. They've got all their, uh, their old stuff is now new again on streaming as well. So check that out. Uh, Jeremy and Scott, thank you both so much for joining us this morning. You got it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. It is The Myriad. It's The Riot. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. Isaiah, brace yourself for this. OnlyFans has just published some numbers. They've announced how much people spent on OnlyFans purchasing content in the past year, or I guess in 2022. And I feel like the number I'm going to tell you it's shocking. Oh, no. On OnlyFans in 2022, people purchased $5.6 billion worth. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of... $5.6 billion? Billion? Billion with a B. That's a lot of nudes. Well, that's not the only thing on there. No, it's... You child. It's not, but... Who's who do you think is spending money on what? What are they? There's what else cooking do you, stuff. Yeah, that's right. Is there not? Fine. They probably spent five point five billion dollars on naked pictures and whatever the re- remainder is on the cooking. Now, my thoughts on this is we need a I'd like a pie graph. Uh huh. Let's give us a breakdown. Right. So if we did it, there's many categories we could do this. Let's go through them. <laughs> The should first we? one, if we do should men, we really? if we do men to women, uh-huh. that pie graph is going to be ninety nine percent red and one percent blue. Yeah, it's all one color. You figure that out for yourself. Uh huh. Next one we do, I think this one is like married to single. Ooh. I think the percentage there is shockingly high, probably. Of single. I think it's probably like seventy five percent single. No, I bet it's eighty percent single. I don't know. I bet you 20% the twenty percent like. Married. I bet you whatever the percentage of married people is is higher than you think. On there? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. How would you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next one I'm thinking uh-huh. is I think Man, you want a whole infographic here. I've got I've got all the stats statistics you need. Yeah. The next one I think is just how many people because it's five point six billion dollars. Yeah. But if, if you told me this was between like 150 men. I wouldn't even be surprised. Yeah. Because I know there's some serial the spenders on them. here. Yeah. The serial spenders that are on here taking up like, I mean, I'm sure 4 billion of this uh-huh. is a large demographic. The lar- uh, the lion's share is uh, is the top 1%, you could say. Yes. Yeah, of OnlyFans purchases. Everybody else has spent like $5. These guys yeah. have spent like a million themselves. It's yeah. their thing. It's yeah, that's that's just that's their their fun money. It's uh this I don't know, doesn't it does it rub you the wrong way? Yeah, obviously. Seeing how much money is spent here. How much just, money is w- w- wasted? Yeah. Yeah. Thrown just, away. Yeah, five point six billion. I mean, I'll tell you who's laughing is OnlyFans because they take a twenty percent cut from everybody. Wow. So that means they just off of just off of everybody else's illicit content, they've made one billion dollars just in one year. And it's it just keeps going up because they made they made almost five billion in twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, up to five point six billion. People are just more and more turning to OnlyFans, which See, I was gonna say, do you think that this is just like a fad? You think people will get away from this? You think you can escape? 
You think this will go down in popularity? I don't know. I mean, some or states still on the come some up. states are cutting down on it, right? Like now, I don't know if it applies, but some states are saying like you need an ID and stuff to be able to to access it's adult so sites. And like, why are people? I don't understand. I, I don't get it. But whatever. Why are you pay? I don't understand what the pay. Are you paying for this? It seems crazy. Yeah, uh, it is great. I mean, you know, I don't want to shame anybody, but at the same time, if you have an OnlyFans charge on your card. I do have to just question your. Can you imagine? And you know what's making. wild is the amount of people that have probably been like caught by their wife buying OnlyFans. That's a, that would be embarrassing. Like imagine she's like, I checked our bank statement and uh, what is OF? Like I have no <laughs> idea what this charge, this reoccurring charge is for sprinkles. She probably plays dumb. It says she's OnlyFans like, sprinkles. What does that mean, honey? <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, I don't even want to think about that. That's enough of that. For more Riot content, head to riot.radiou.com.